go. Hi everybody. I have been messaged by quite a few people asking me how I do my center prints, how I piece them together. I have a Epson ET 15,000 and so I can print um, a max of 13 by 19 or uh, for you, those of you that don't know, you can actually get the rolled sublimation paper and it will go up to 48 inches long. It's kind of a pain in the butt though. Um, so um, this is my PNG image right here. And so I'm just going to show you how I go about um, cropping it in Photoshop as well as piecing the paper together. Um, I also have one that I did in silhouette for those of you that are silhouette users. So I'm just going to go up here. I'm going to copy my image and I have, I think it's really, really important and on all of my doormats. I have downloaded, I have downloaded, uh, 18 by 30. I've just downloaded the image and I will attach this as well. Uh, but I think it's really important to download the image so you can see how it's going to look. And then if you size to that, then every time you do it, it works out perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead. So you can see if I had printed the way that it was, then it's a little bit small for what I like for my mats. This particular design, I actually want to um, extend into the rubber area. I want it to bleed into the rubber area. So when a lot of you have asked me about bleeding and what I mean by that, what that means is I am extending my design, uh, my sublimation past the sublimatable area or past the substrate. Um, the rubber will not accept sublimation, you won't see it, but um, you can extend it just a little bit and it bleeds off into that, but that ensures that you get full coverage on the edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and resize because I do like my mats to be pretty full in the center. So there's my image and I always, and so then what I would do once I have decided that yes, that's what I want it to look like, then I'm gonna go up here and I'm actually just gonna turn the mat off so that I can just work with my image. So I'm gonna go up here and the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to uh, flip it horizontal or mirror it so that when I print it and when I press it, it is correct. I always try to do that very first because if not, I'll forget it. Um, and then I always use this selection, the, score, the rectangle marquee tool and I, tr I get to the edge of my design and come up so that I'm at the top and the edge. And then I'm going to extend that marquee. Um, like I said, I can print 13 inches wide. So I usually like to go some, somewhere between 12.25 and 12.5. And I'm going to copy and then I'm going to bring it over and I have opened a 13 by 19 sheet and I'm just going to paste it on there. Then um, I'm going to go ahead and print just like I normally would. And then I always keep my image um, on here just in case I need to reprint or something. So I'll just turn it off and go back to uh, my initial image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave, make sure that your rectangle mar rectangular marquee tool is still clicked. And I'm going to overlap just about a sixteenth of an inch from where I was before. So I'm going to go ahead and take the rest of that. And just follow the exact same steps. And then there is your print. I pre-printed so I wouldn't take too much time, but that's how I get to that point. So now I have my prints here. And as you can see, there's an edge on both of them. 
So on one of them, only one of them, I cut the edge off. It doesn't matter which one. It'll work whatever side you decide to do. And I'll show you why in a minute why I like Photoshop. I prefer pho Photoshop just because uh, it's just a little bit easier to align them. But you can do it in silhouette and um, with a little bit of practice, it's very easy to do in silhouette as well. So I'm gonna put this one off to the side for just a minute and I'm gonna work with this one that still has the white edge. And you guys, only you guys will understand this. I have struggled so much with tumblers and look, it worked. I'm so happy. Very happy about that. My family just doesn't seem to get it. Why I'm so happy. All right, so I'm gonna start on this end and you always wanna start on this end and go all the way toward the center so that you're pushing any air out so that you don't get puckering in your paper because that will make it harder. You want it to lay as flat as it possibly can. So I just put two, two pieces of tape. This is just regular scotch tape, nothing special. And then if you turn that over, as you can see, I've got about a half of an inch overlap with the tape. Then I bring this design and I always like to start and I kind of curve it up so that I have a little bit, so it's off of the tape that I have a little bit of control over it. And I just slowly bring it back until it lines up. And it is, when you've got that bit of overhang, it's just so much easier to get it to line up perfectly. So there's that. And as you can see, my design lines up perfectly. Um, in some, so piecing together like this um, works really good. I've done it on signs, I've done it. One thing I will say on my mats, I always come to the back and put another layer of tape. On some things, you have to be a little bit careful with that. I found with the signs, if you put too thick of a layer of tape, um, it's a very fine balance on the signs, on, on hard substrates, because if you put too thick of tape, then you can actually get a line. But I've also done, um, not left that edge on there, and the paper's actually, the, the tape's gotten warm and spread out, and it's happened to me with heat resistant tape and with regular tape, and there will be a line. So you have to be really careful with that. But on these mats, it is very, very, um, it doesn't make a difference. And it keeps your design nice and tight. And then when you, when you print it, or when you press it, there's no line. Okay, so I have, so this one, I always like to go and, and cut as close to my image as I can. On this one, I'm actually gonna go right to the edge because if you remember this one, I want to bleed right off the side of the mat. So I always trim them up before I press them because it's just easier to um, make sure it's even. Okay, so there's my mat, the center of my mat ready to press. Um, I'll let Colin, so this is going to be my, this is the border that goes with it and I will attach, I will attach, uh, it's just a mock-up. I don't have a finished mat. I, I pulled all my last year and didn't think to get pictures of them finished, but I will attach the mock-up of what the mat will look like at the end. Thanks. Have a great night.